most important thing that we want to do as a union is one is to tell our story that we are a critical part of the history so we see that as one of the things that we will continue to do continue to be vibrant vital members of the body of the Episcopal Church <music>
St. Augustine's College in Raleigh, there were very young uh, upstart priests present, including uh, Ed Rodman, Ike Miller, Isaac Miller, um, Richard Wynn, Jim Woodruff, and um, I, I, those I can recall being there uh, because they were very raucous and um, kind of undisciplined at that point. But, uh, of course, many of them went on to be very good priests and leaders in the, in the church. But I can remember them being kind of rowdy and raucous at that initial meeting. I would say that Bishop Primo was a very faithful and stalwart person who exemplified the highest principles of Christian living. He was a stalwart and a very faithful person. I have uh, proudly been one of the founding members of the Union of Black Episcopalians, which was known as UBCL, clergy and laity, uh, in 1968, when it transformed from the Church Workers Conference to the UBCL. In the course of that 50-year ministry, I have met and had the pleasure of working with many significant black leaders, lay and ordained, but certainly one of the more courageous ones was Fred Williams, who uh, was a wonderful friend of mine, who worked with me at EDS. Well, the prime mover of that particular uh, event were two fellows. I worked with them, but they were the two that really uh, worked hard at it. And that was um, Quasi Thornell, who became the president, and Nathan Wright. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are the ones who made the case for the need to see it as lay clergy neutral organization. And that was a, a huge breakthrough since the clergy had a monopoly on the leadership and the notion of clergy privilege was actually stronger in the black community uh, than in the white community, probably still to today. Fred, was very instrumental in making sure that people took that seriously uh, and along with Quasi and Nathan made it happen. Thinking about some of the rich conversations that um, Father Jesse and I had and, and remembering the great legacy that he left, I think the biggest one is his stressing Afrocentric themes within the church. Before Jesse Jr., um, there was no Kente cloth present in the church. There was no gospel music. It was pretty much um, this, the, the typical um, Episcopal European style worship. I would say that uh, Dad's legacy uh, throughout his ministry, but certainly as the president of, for that 1975-1976 uh, of UBE, was standing up for that which is right. 
no matter what. No matter what the, uh, no matter how uh, high the burden, you know, that the hurdles are, no matter how steep the mountain is, uh, right is right, just is just, and there is no alternative. Um, you know, I, I thought before coming over, you know, what would uh, Dad uh, say about the UBE now? Whether he was president of UBE or as a retired priest of the church, if Dad was still uh, alive. And I think the message would be as it was uh, back in 1975 and certainly back in February 1968 when Dad was among the, uh, I think, 16 or 17 members who went to St. Philip's in uh, Harlem to form what is now the, uh, the UBE. And Dad's uh, words would be the, uh, the same, especially in these trying times, in this very difficult uh, political uh, climate. Now is not the time to lay low. Now is not the time to be weak. Now is not the time to be weary, but to stand up and march as men and, and women for that which is right and, uh, and just. Serious time in the world at, at, at the time. This was the civil rights movement time. Uh, and, and almost every time we got together, it was something about how could we participate more fully in the civil rights movement. And, and we had to overcome the segregation in the church, trying to break down the walls of segregation. We tried to integrate the University of the South. And I had to go there as a student in the summer in order to do that. That was tough. Bishop, Bishop Burgess was our first black bishop. And um, he was a no-nonsense kind of person because he was highly respected mm -hmm. and greatly revered among clergy and lay people. So no, there was not pushback at all, but they, I think we were all encouraged by Bishop Burgess. Yeah, that he always went by Canon Guy. And he got the he got the call to Jesus in New Haven and uh, helped for, uh, form the Black United Front in New Haven and then moved that into the national arena with the UBE uh, and was a real stalwart, you know, and did what he could do. Uh, in regard to those things that uh, were important both to the New Haven black community and to the church community. But there were many people, and I say this uh, in all respect and love, who felt that he sold out when he took the job with the presiding bishop rather than stay independent. Well, Ed was a wonderful human being. A uh, very courageous fellow, uh, and he helped found the uh, UBE in Boston uh, in 1973 or 74, and uh, we got a bunch of people together uh, and met at St. Cyprian's, in, I mean St. Bartholomew's in Cambridge, and <coughs> formed the Boston chapter. I think my legacy to UBE was to uh, uh, develop an infrastructure for the organization, to develop an infrastructure for the board, for the formation of chapters, for communication. Uh, this is back in the day when newsletters were sent by snail mail, as we call it now. Uh, developing an infrastructure for our presence at general convention to get more black deputies elected uh, to go to general convention and then to get those deputies placed on interim bodies. We had not been elected in large numbers and therefore were not placed on many interim bodies. So I think my legacy was providing or developing an infrastructure for the organization.
One of the challenges that I think has been a challenge of UBE, but for me in particular, was to bring unity to the diaspora uh, within the Union of Black Episcopalians. And so we had um, an opportunity to gather people of African descent from a number of areas in the world. And uh, one of the most exciting times at one of our UBE gatherings was to have people represented from African descent in the Latino community, um, from the African continent, and from the Caribbean. And uh, we really spent our time in the two years of my administration uniting the African diaspora. I look back and reflect upon my tenure as UBE and what my legacy might have been. But what comes to my mind consciously are two things. One, we moved the UBE National Office to Chicago and located it in St. Edmund's Church. And we really set up structures that allowed us to put systems in place. I think secondly, uh, we, under my administration, let uh, UBE members know how important what they were doing was by the type of speakers we were able to invite to the annual meeting which was held in Chicago during my tenure and the great legacy behind those speakers. I believe my contribution was uh, virtually for developing young um, people uh, to participate in the full life of the church. My thing is that how can we be UBE? And you know we have conferences with adults and we're talking about participating in the full, fuller life of the Episcopal Church if you don't have young people to nurture them. The Bible says that you, you train up a child in the way that he or she should grow. I think undoubtedly the most challenging time uh, was when uh, we were slated to have our national uh, annual conference and meeting in Cincinnati uh, as a part of a movement that was a precursor to No Justice and No Peace now. Um, all the black organizations that had planned to have major national meetings in Cincinnati that year pulled out. Um, other major religious uh, organizations, the NAACP, um, other groups chose not to meet and our board decided that even though we would have to take a financial hit for uh, making this decision, if we were going to walk our talk, then we were going to have to pull out. Because there's no way that we could claim to be an organization about justice and liberation and peace and cross that line and say that money and saving money was more important to us than saving lives and doing justice. Well, I got some people to help me put in a plan that any diocese we go in, we'll ask them to help sponsor the convention. And we went to the Bishop of Virginia then, Peter Lee, and he gave us a chance to prove what we can do with a grant to help sponsor the convention. That was the first thing we did. The second thing we did about that, when we went to Houston, we were able to secure the presiding bishop to come to Houston, and she really turned the place out.
really got us moving in a different direction. It would have to be the opening of the office, the new office down on Oglethorpe uh, in, uh, in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, I saw that through to the end. I was determined to make sure that they, that office was open. It was formerly in uh, Ohio, in Cincinnati, and we brought it to uh, uh, D.C. And uh, Canon Davis was very helpful with, with regard to that, and I bless his name for uh, as much energy as he put out and help that he uh, uh, assisted me with. But that would have to be the legacy. I went through some challenging times, financially, uh, loss of support, uh, and it was when I became president, I kind of look at myself as being a midwife <laughs> because I kind of paved the way for what we have today as the, in, in the administration, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But I can remember uh, when I first became, uh, got involved with UB, as treasurer especially, uh, we had what was called the um, UBE suite at General Convention. And at those days, you could get all the black folks together in a suite in a hotel. And fortunately today, you know, we're here at the Black Deputies meeting. Uh, in the last, I'd say, 10 years, we've had to get meeting space uh, for, um, for the deputies to meet during General Convention. And that's been a big role as treasurer you know, and business manager, is organizing and, and negotiating to get meeting space so that the black deputies could, in, in fact, um, uh, meet and strategize as well as the black deputies meeting that we've had over the years. Part of the foundation of any organization, especially an Episcopal organization, is that we need to make sure that spiritually we had everything in line. And so in order to do that, we introduced two, two uh, spiritual practices within UBE. And those included having a weekly Bible study online using a conference call where people could call in from all over the country and also internationally to pray together for half an hour and that's our prayer. And then secondly, on a monthly basis, we have our Bible study and we decided to frame the Bible study so that what we're studying is the upcoming Sunday's lesson. Those two practices, our prayer line and our Bible study, are our spiritual foundation and practice for UBE. We also want to remind ourselves that the Episcopal Church and the Black Episcopalians come from the diaspora and so therefore we want to include those into the Union and represent those from the Korean, those from Africa, those from Canada, and wherever Black Episcopalians may be. So that's part of our goal, to be international and to, be, and to represent all of God's children of Ebony Grace. And the governing board constantly looking at how we can more effectively do the work uh, of combating racism, decided we needed leadership at the president and officers from two years to three years. And so what we've had discovered is that with a three-year tenure, we have become more effective in engaging the church um, and systems of racism and building partnerships in the larger society as we work uh, to eliminate the injustice of people of color. Congratulations to President Annette Buchanan and the membership of the Union of Black Episcopalians on this the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the UBE. I remember as a young teenager going to a meeting of the UBCL, Union of Black Clergy and Laity, as the UBE was known back in the early 70s. And even in those days, the union was committed to the work of eradicating all forms of racism and anything that harms or hurts any human child of God within the church and in the broader society. In this diocese, I can't do my ministry without the members of UBE having my back. I'm clear about that. And something that I think is, 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 is true that has happened naturally in this diocese, and it is not about segregation in any way, but because there's an active uh, presence of UBE, the Black Clergy Caucus in this diocese, there has spun off then the Asian American uh, uh, group and um, uh, the Hispanic Ministries group. Um, and, and those have modeled themselves in a lot of ways on this model that, that UBE has brought. So 
we, we are greatly blessed by the presence of UBE in this diocese. And in fact, I could not, I, I could not do my work without them. Hello, my name is Gay Jennings, and I have the great privilege of serving as the president of the House of Deputies. And on this occasion of your 50th anniversary, I bring you greetings from the entire House of Deputies. I admire everything that the Union of Black Episcopalians has stood for and worked for during the past 50 years. You have been gifted with great leaders like Annette Buchanan and many others who have come before her. Thank you for bringing to this church your passion, uh, your uh, care, your courage, your witness to what we as a church can be. So actually first I'd say that um, early on in my engagement with the Greater Los Angeles chapter, I was invited to speak to a, at a chapter meeting because I guess it was their practice for new clergy to come and speak, um, to get known in the diocese. And I remember after talking about my work and what I had hoped and what I was doing in um, my parish at St. Philip's, having several people come to me um, and identify themselves in Spanish. Um, and they said, you know, folks don't seem to know there's a lot of us Afro-Caribbean folk or Afro-Latino. On this wonderful occasion, I want to congratulate the Union of Black Episcopalians on its 50th anniversary. Um, I especially want to offer thanksgivings for all of the saints on whose shoulders we stand. Hello, I'm Michael Barlow, the Secretary of the General Convention, and it's a great honor to be able to bring greetings to you today. The Union of Black Episcopalians is celebrating its 50th anniversary, but in fact, as we all know, there have been over 200 years of leadership in the Episcopal Church by Episcopalians of, black de of African descent. And it is a great honor to uh, bring greetings to President Buchanan and to all of you as we celebrate this important uh, event in the life of the Episcopal Church. What a wonderful um, time to celebrate uh, this, this union's um, achievements. And I want to um, say how happy I am to have been a part of this for almost 30 years, up to 50 years. And I want to wish the president and the body well as it looks to the future that I believe is still bright. I mean, you have grown immensely from a very small uh, lay clergy grouping to what we are today, and you have embraced um, Caribbean people, African people, and folks who want to be a part of this amazing uh, movement. I'm happy to be part of it. Congratulate UBE on its 50th anniversary, and I say to you, continue your mission because you have made so much possible for so many. First, coming into UBE as a youth, I wasn't really sure about it. You know, as a kid, you just see people like you, and you know, you just see it as fun and games. But, you know, growing up later on, like now, I'm 18 years old, and I actually understand the experience of the UBE right now because I see others who are yeah just like me but I see why we're all together at once because we're here for a reason or a meaning so it basically it, it like it's like I'm reconnected with family like I never really you know was actually born with <laughs> is that the reason why they're there is because of lots of people it's not because of any one person so who has to be congratulated by us as UBE at this particular uh, grand uh, and exciting anniversary time is all of our leadership going all the way back and we need to be able to name them and we need to and that's that has to be part of what we do when we are thanking people we have to be thanking everybody that did so much work uh, so that we could be in this place and and when we have to take that feeling good about ourselves to strengthen us to go forward. How exciting it is for you to be to be celebrating celebrating 50 years. I remember as a young boy when the organization was just coming together, the likes of Fred Williams, Bishop Primo, Bishop Arthur Williams, and even Quasi Turnell back in those days as things were coming together. For this group to be around for the last 50 years and to have its impact on the church has just been amazing. So here today we celebrate. 50 years of success in working. There's a lot of work to do, and I look forward to many years in the future as we continue our work together as the mission for the Office of Black Ministries. So, I'm excited. What would you say? Well, I want to congratulate 
Annette and the leadership of UBE for the work that they've done. Uh, I've been involved with UBE now for a number of years and I've seen an improvement. Uh, and I must say this, the financial improvement that I have seen have really given me um, the, the reason to support UBE even more. As a matter of fact, last year I became a lifetime member of UBE. First, I'd like to congratulate Abby Cannon, Annette Buchanan for her uh, indefatigable work on behalf of UBE. Uh, she's been a breath of fresh air. Um, I look forward to getting my emails from her weekly or even more often. Uh, and, um, and she's just made the UV turn a corner. Well, you know, the, the, there's a hymn that says, we've come this far by faith. Um, and for the Union of Black Episcopalians, that really has been our experience. Um, so many people have labored in the vineyard and done their part to bring us to this beautiful place. Um, it's my great joy and honor to offer greetings to the UBE on the occasion of their 50th anniversary gala. What an accomplishment and what a celebration. I especially want to offer greetings to Annette Buchanan, the president, who is a Diocese of New Jersey faithful member. Uh, she's an incredible leader for the whole church, and we give thanks for her all the time in the Diocese of New Jersey. One of the most moving experiences I have had so far in my episcopacy was at a recent UBE conference. Uh, we decided to have a Eucharist to honor all of the veterans of the various wars um, and to also remember those uh, African American people of color veterans who have now uh, passed on to the larger life. And I think all of us planners were surprised at how well attended that Eucharist was and doubly surprised at the number of veterans and the, at just the sheer scope of the age range of all of the people who gathered with me around the sacred font. And again, it was one of the most moving experiences of my life that I was able to walk around to each of them and bless them in the name of Jesus and, and thank them for their service to this country. The UBE has really been an instrument of God's hope and compassion and justice, and God's love in the church. Now, today in the Episcopal Church, we see diverse representations of the wide family of humanity on our councils of leadership, on our various bodies, and on the work that we do. And that is greatly attributable to the work of UBE. Not only on our church-wide level, but in our diocese and in our local communities, people of color and people of all stripes and types participate in the work of the church today. UBE has helped the church to truly be the church. I remember hearing at that UBE meeting that I went to in the early 70s, Bishop John Burgess, then the Bishop of Massachusetts, who at another time served as the president of the union. He stood up and he spoke in the midst of a debate. He said it's important that the UBE be a part of the work of the church because the work of UBE helps the church to be truly Catholic. To be truly Catholic indeed has to do with holding fast to the apostles' teaching, to the core doctrine of our church. But the word Catholic also means universal. To be Catholic, the church must be a church that includes and embraces all peoples. The work of UBE is to help the Episcopal Church to truly be and remain part of the church Catholic by including and embracing all. So thank you for that work. God bless you. The struggle continues. And don't you give up. The old slaves used to say, walk together children. And don't you get weary, because there's a great camp meeting in the promised land.